OK, um, hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's summer webinar hosted by the Southern Regional College. This is the third of our summer webinars and we have another one happening next week with my colleague in engineering, James Donnelly on 3D modelling. So there's still time to register for that. My name is Brenda Calligan and I'm joined today by my colleague Emma Little. We are both food innovation and technology specialists at SRC who help food businesses in all areas of MPD, food labelling, market research, manufac manufacturing scale up to name but a few. Emma will explain a little more about the funded support that is available at the end of the webinar. If anyone wants to contact myself or Emma, our email addresses will be in the chat box. The webinar is going to be recorded and sent to everyone who is registered. It will also be on our YouTube channel afterwards. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to add them to the chat box and then we can go through these at the end. Um, a quick thank you to carl -Ann, Heather and Sarah who are working away in the background to ensure this webinar goes smoothly. So um, I'm delighted to have a representative from Mintel joining us today. So I'm now going to hand you over to Mark Beckett, Mintel Account Manager for Ireland, and Rebecca Blemman, Market Research Analyst at Mintel, who will be giving a really interesting presentation on the latest food and drink trends of 2022. Thanks very much, Brenda. Now, good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, Rebecca will be doing most of the work this morning. The, the actual presentation. I wanted to just give a bit of a, just a bit of a uh, overlay overlay of uh, Mintel. So um, we are Mintel, experts in what consumers want and why. We help businesses grow uh, by providing consumer insights, market intelligence, product innovation across competitive landscapes. Uh, the Mintel platform encompasses uh, a variety of tools. These include a global new products database, local, regional and uh, global insights, in-market reports. Uh, the in-market reports include Ireland and we publish 27 reports each year across finance, across retail, tourism, uh, food and drink and leisure. And we also have a tool called Mintel Trends. Uh, Mintel Trends helps you understand what's new and what's coming next uh, in consumer behaviour. And this is what this is what Rebecca is going to uh, talk about uh, across the presentation. I'm just going to bring some of the uh, trends to life. Uh, and uh, with that, enjoy the presentation and over to you, Rebecca. Thanks, Mark. Um, so good morning, everyone. I am going to be, as was said, uh, giving a presentation on food and drink trends for this year. Um, so I'm going to kind of focus on four key trends, so which are the health benefits of plant based food and drink, foods with functional health claims and um, with a focus on immunity and gut health, ethical packaging and recycling initiatives. And then I'll finish with the impact of Mintel's enjoyment everywhere trend post COVID. So I start with plant based. So in the plant based trend, NI and ROI consumers are expressing open attitudes to plant based food and drink. So as you can see from the graph there, 44% um, of NI and 49% of ROI respondents agree that a healthy diet should contain both animal and plant proteins. And then 23% of NI and 30% of ROI um, report that they do not think they eat a healthy amount of fruit and veg. So this gives companies and brands an indication of consumers buying behaviours and willingness to do so. Um, Mintel reports that there are numerous innovative opportunities, specifically in plant-based drinks and yogurts. So um, plant based yogurts um, have the opportunity to be more vocal about their fibre content as they can leverage their ingredients known by consumers as a natural source of fibre to offer health, nutritional and well-being benefits. And then for consumers of plant based dairy, fibre content is a discriminating factor of choice. And then vegan ice creams and um, health claims tend to be more prevalent in vegan products than their dairy counterparts. So brands can tap into the health halo surrounding plant based products and dial up health credentials on a plant based on plant based ice cream products. So as you can see from this graph, currently Irish consumers are already using milk alternatives in their homes and they're using ingredients such as almond, coconut, oat milk, soy and hazelnut and rice milks. Um, which just shows that there is currently a prevalence of drinking and usage of milk alternatives already um, as recent as the end of 2021. Um, and then in this graph, Italian consumers have come to associate um, a good source of fibre with plant based ingredients such as oat, pea, soy, almond and coconut. So brands can formulate yogurt with ingredients known by consumers to be a source of fibre and highlight their fibre content. And then alongside oats, fruit and veg are, are known as good sources of fibre. 
Um, as among US consumers who are consuming more fruit and veg, 49% are doing so to eat more fibre. So by blending their products with ingredients with high fibre content, dairy brands will meet the need of flexitarian consumers who want to increase their intake of plant-based food. So in other words, the high fibre claim is a good gateway to get consumers into plant-based food and drink. And then oats in particular are a very popular um, go-to base for plant-based drinks. As you can see, between March 2021 and February 2022, oats accounted for 33% of launches in plant-based drinks. So companies can leverage consumer awareness of the positive health and ecological credentials of oats. Um, so it is, it's a popular ingredient already in the market. And then in China, consumers who had purchased oat-based drinks were asked the reasons for why they would purchase them again. And responses included, um, they offer high quality protein, they have a rich and aromatic taste, they have functional benefits, high protein content, they're good value for money, um, and they have no low reduced fat and lactose. So there's a range of um, reasons why consumers would repeat purchase of oat-based drinks. And then on the market, there's plenty of new dairy alternative in ingredients that are engaging consumers. So in Sweden, um, broad beans for us to drink by Planty claim to be a great alternative to dairy based milk and a less sweet alternative to oat milk. And then in the UK, the brand Dog launched an, a dairy free potato based drink, which is touted as a more sustainable alternative to oat milk. And the brand also claims that switching to a potato based alternative reduces the climate impact by 75%. And then in Germany, Vly launched a cocoa flavoured pea protein, which is made with dates, cocoa and pea protein from France. So there's a, there's a variety of plant based ingredients um, and plant based all dairy alternatives that are on the market at the minute. And then, so according to Mintel's Global Consumer Trend in Control, in times of uncertainty, consumers crave a sense of agency over their lives. Food and drink brands need to help consumers feel empowered to make confident decisions that protect their health and the planet's health alike, as this puts sustainable proteins centre stage in innovation. Alternative um, plant proteins are pressing into the mainstream as they enhance offerings beyond environmental impact. Today's most popular alternative plant proteins have the technical properties, nutrition profile and affordability that can make them the next soy or pea protein, and then clean meat that delivers on taste and texture that's close to real meat, and food safety at comparable nutrition and price will potentially disrupt both the meat industry and the plant-based meat alternative industry. So staying on theme with Mintel's in control trend, consumers are seeking food and drink products that support health and nutrition, two key areas of health that they're eager to improve our immunity and gut health. So as you can see from this graph, although research is still in its infancy, some consumers already link gut health with immunity, mood, sleep and weight. So US consumers were asked why they maintain their gastrointestinal and digestive health and responses included to feel their best, to prevent future health problems, improve immune system strength, mood, sleep and skin appearance, support weight management and promote cognitive function. So there are a range of health benefits that consumers believe um, healthy gut health and immunity can benefit. And then food, drink and ingredients that are linked to healthy gut um, include fibre, fermented foods, probiotics and prebiotics. We've got some examples of new product releases um, with functional health claims that are specific to gut health. So these claims are digestive, prebiotic and probiotic. So the first one there, um, Cleveland Kitchen launched a bread and butter pickle chips product that is said to satisfy sweet cravings and help support gut health. And then in the UK, Morrison's launched an own brand nourishing shot that's high in calcium and a source of fibre. And then according to the manufacturer, calcium support, calcium supports the normal function of digestive enzymes as part of a balanced diet and healthy lifestyle. And then in Canada, Crazy Days um, soda brand launched a cherry cola flavoured prebiotic soda that's said to be crafted using a unique combination of prebiotic plant-based fibres, traditional botanical ingredients and no added sugar. So there's a range of um, both food and drink with functional health claims that are specific to gut health there. Um, fermented beverages are another um, products that have that's known to support gut health and immunity um, as they're rich in beneficial bacteria and gut specific nutrients that aid digestion and improves the gut mi microbiome. 
High antioxidant properties and bacteria in fermented ingredients can trigger immune responses to fight against infections. So more people seek solutions that work with rather than against their bodies and fermented beverages can be part of a dietary strategy to, to support health holistically. And there's a greater appeal towards natural food and drink that can improve functional health, resulting in demand for fermented beverages among health conscious consumers. Um, kombucha is an example of a fermented drink. Um, it was once known as a novelty drink, but it's now gaining traction on a global scale. Um, in the Asia Pacific region, it's known as a healthier alternative to sugary drinks. And then between 2018 and 2020, kombucha global launches grew by 19%. Um, the main driver for consumers' uptake of the product is the probiotics content, which links to better digestion, with a significant number of new studies extolling the power of the gut and linking to a multitude of health benefits such as immune health. There is potential for, a fermented, for fermented drinks like kombucha to be positioned alongside a better immune system. So now there's some examples of kombucha products on the market. So in the UK, you've got number one, launched a living gut and immune kombucha shot with natural ginger, grapefruit and lime flavour to improve the taste. Um, in Vietnam, Star Kombucha um, has launched a canned version of the drink and it contains 100% natural tea, scoby yeast, fruits and herbs, and it's rich in probiotics that help digestion, boost immunity and promote weight loss. And then in the US, Brew Doctor launched Uplift Kombucha Sweet Mint, which combines live and active bacteria cultures with caffeine, using a blend of green tea, gaiusa, and yerba mate. So kefir is another fermented beverage that's on the market at the minute. Um, as you can see, it's available in both yogurt form and in a drink format, so can appeal to whatever consumers need. Um, in addition to probiotics that may help support immunity and gut health, dairy kefir offers other compounds with health benefits, um, including polysaccharide kefiran, which is a potent anti-inflammatory and stimulant for the immune system. So it can also provide affordable nutrition to consumers looking to support their health and strengthen their immunity. And then as consumers are becoming increasingly aware of the impact of their shopping habits on the planet, many are adjusting their behaviours to better the planet. So I'll move on to recyclable packaging now. So as you, as you can see from this graph, Irish consumers are aware of the importance and the practice of recycling their food and drink packaging, as 90% of NI and 91% of ROI respondents agree that paper packaging is more environmentally friendly than plastic. And then 52% of NI and 57% of ROI agree that they think clear plastic drink bottles are more environmentally friendly than coloured plastic ones. However, Mintel suggests that more clear and concise recycling instructions are needed on packaging. So in times of uncertainty triggered by a global pandemic, consumers suffer increased feelings of precariousness and financial insecurity. Um, according to Mintel's consumer trend in control, which was mentioned before, this creates in consumers the need to find a sense of control Growing awareness of misinformation circulating online is feeding an environment of mistrust, making it harder for consumers to make informed decisions. So brands can deliver the information consumers need to feel like they are in the driver's seat, as well as the flexibility and options for them to make decisions that suit both their individual changing needs and their wider environmental concerns. So as environmental awareness turns into responsible actions, consumers will seek to be in control with clear on pack information that meets their environmental values and informs them of responsible pack disposal actions. So amid confusion over what can and can't be recycled, over half of UK consumers think brands should make it easier to recycle their packaging. As such, unpack material and recycling information should be simple, clear and actionable. So we've got some examples here of clear um, recycling instructions that are on packagings at the minute. So that first one just gives the um, simple instruction to empty and replace the lid, but also offers a reminder for consumers to check locally that it can actually be recycled. As it says, it's the asterisk um, down below that it's not recycled in all communities. Um, and then just that last example there just gives three easy steps to just enjoy the meal, remove film from the tray and recycle the cardboard tray. So clear, just simple um, instructions like that can um, really encourage consumers to recycle their packaging. Um, next, Mintel suggests that there will be a need for companies and brands to standardise and measure climate and ethical commitments. 
So in the next few years, brands, retailers and governments have opportunities to collaborate and create standards that make it easier for consumers to understand environmental claims. S sustainably minded consumers will be looking for products that include details about how agriculture, transport, processing and other factors contribute to carbon footprint and consumers will want to know more about whether offsets or actual reductions in emissions were used to achieve carbon neutral or positive status. Also, consumers will be looking for tangible, measurable ethical commitments in areas such as animal welfare, as 31% of Thai shoppers would like online stores to have a feature that highlights ethical brands. So detailed ethical measurements will reassure consumers that brands are making a difference and it reduces the need to confirm their claims with their own research. And then to make it even easier, ethical claims can be standardised across industries. So now there's a couple of examples of UK retailers that have committed to sustainability. So in September 2021, Morrison's moved to become the UK's first zero waste store. Um, it partnered with Nestle to collect all hard to recycle soft plastics in the UK. So this included shop waste, so uh, food waste, cardboard, green waste, PPE and then tins, cans and foils were collected by employees in the warehouse and collected by specialist waste partners for recycling. And then consumer waste, um, so hard to recycle soft plastics such as sweet wrappers, um, hard plastics such as yogurt tubs, mixed materials and specialist products like ink cart cartridges and batteries were collected at dedicated collection points in the store like the one pictured there. And then unsold food was offered to consumers through Morrison's Too Good To Go app, um, through which consumers could buy about £10 worth of fruit, veg, jelly and bakery products for about £3 and then could collect them in store. <clears throat> and then in May of this year, Tesco's launched the Better Baskets initiative for just the month of May to help shoppers make healthier and sustainable choices. Um, so products such as those that made use of recyclable and reduced packaging, products that were high in fiber under 100 calories and then plant based options were placed in key points or healthy zones in store to encourage consumers to make better choices. Um, so the final Mintel trend in this presentation is enjoyment everywhere. So amid various ongoing crises, the moments of pleasure gained from eating and drinking have acquired a heightened relevance to consumers in 2022. The preciousness of these happy moments in consumers' day-to-day -day lives make pleasure, make pleasure a topic worth taking seriously. As well as placing importance on health and ethical behaviour, consumers are being encouraged to seek out joy in their everyday lives. So in the food and drink industry, themes of joy and creativity can be threaded throughout the products produced by companies and brands. So com consumers are in need of joy joyful respites amid the anxiety and stress from pandemic and other crises. Going forward, consumers will have a newfound appreciation for occasions when happiness, fun or playfulness can be found in everyday items and activities. In the food, drink and food service industry, um, they have served increasingly as outlets for comfort and creativity that consumers were craving during the pandemic as con some consumers gain new cooking, baking and drink making skills that they can come back to when they need to play, create or impress. In the coming years, brands have an opportunity to make sure meals, drinks and snacks are not boring. Consumers will be seeking products that amplify flavours, colours, textures, aromas and interactivity to create moments of happiness or memorable experiences. Um, so here are some examples of the ways that UK and Irish brands are weaving that theme of enjoyment into their products. So in the UK in May, um, Martin Spencer's launched a collection of solid milk chocolates that were in the shape of corgis in celebration of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Um, and then in March, um, Oreos repackaged their original flavour biscuit um, to celebrate the release of the new Batman movie. And then in December, for more seasonal enjoyment theme, Martin Spencer's again launched a gin product in a um, recyclable musical snow globe pack. And the gin itself contained edible gold and silver leaves. And then on a slightly bigger scale, brands in Japan and China have been taking inspiration from social media to create more playful food and drink content and activities. So in that first example there in Japan, the brand House Tungari created a salted vanilla flavoured corn snack to go with vanilla ice cream after a social media trend went viral for showing an easy to try yet playful ice cream and snack pairing. And then in the second example, the brand Koikea introduced a version of Martozo, which is an Italian sweetbread that's usually stuffed with cream. And um, the Japanese version instead sandwiched fresh cream between salted potato chips for a more exciting flavor profile. And then in China, 
um, the instant coffee brand Young Poo launched a concentrated coffee liquid for consumers to play with and create their own drink recipes. Um, so now in the next 12 months, food, drink and food service brands can help consumers find joy and escape their everyday worries, stress or boredom, um, as fun will be essential amid the ongoing threat of COVID, financial stressors and divisive current events. For consumers who remain wary of venturing outside, Mintel notes that brands can provide the the brands can provide opportunities for playfulness at home um, through digital cooking classes, <coughs> digital cocktail making classes that consumers um, participated in during COVID, as they can make meal times more fun. Brands will also need to consider their unique positioning and target audiences when creating joyful innovations. There's a broad spectrum to consider, such as low price traits for budget conscious consumers, affordable luxuries or expensive experiences for people who are willing to spend more to treat themselves. So going forward, it's important for consumers and companies and brands alike to find a balance between food and drink that are healthy and sustainably produced and that create moments of joy and pleasure to act as an escape from the stress and uncertainty of the world. All of this envelops a more holistic approach to food and drink to facilitate healthy and ethical living while also making time to create enjoyable, memorable experiences. Um, thank you, that's me. I think we're going to move to some questions now. I might kick it off with a wee question of my own. Uh, Rebecca, if you don't mind, uh, yeah. you, you spoke at the start about the dairy alternatives, and I think we've all noticed in the supermarkets that aisle just seems to be growing and growing and growing and growing. Um, do you think the dairy farmers can fight back, or do you think their demise is uh, written in stone at this stage? Um, I think there will there'll always be a demand for standard milk. Um, I did read that there obviously more and more dairy farmers are turning towards kind of more organic production, so that could probably help um, keep standard milks going. Um, so I do, I do think that there will, there will always be a demand for standard milk. I don't think they'll, they'll go out of business completely. Yeah, I think it stimulates as well, Emma, the whole marketplace, um, the, the dairy alternatives. We, we have some examples of uh, brands who started off with the uh, producing vegan ice cream, but it, it wasn't a massive success because of the taste. So they've actually moved into the sort of the full dairy, full dairy ice cream market. And the same with the examples you can see with uh, sort of Denny trying to embrace uh, the the sort of the vegan vegan sausages as well. So we, we may see that with sort of dairy brands as well unfold. I have a wee question here um, to ask you from, from one of the attendees, um, if somebody wants to take that. Um, so with many consumers under financial stress from the cost of living crisis, how do you think they could glean enjoyment from food and drink in a more affordable way? Um, I think because obviously the cost of living crisis is such a major um, issue at the minute, I think um, just finding small pieces of enjoyment in food and drink, so whether it's just a wee snack during the day, um, to just kind of can offer some sort of kind of um, exploration or escapism even from kind of the stress of what's going on in the world at the minute just like kind of joy enjoyment in the little things i think can probably serve um enjoyment for those who um for who affordability is a massive um kind of point in their lives yeah and if i can just add to that as well rebecca in terms of sort of taking taking enjoyment right across the whole spectrum as well so you know uh, pleasure and going on a, a luxury cruise is kind of one end of the spectrum but that, that even that enjoyment now that uh, sort of brands are they're, are they're sort of getting on the bandwagon in terms of even the, the packaging and unpackaging and it kind of talks to the, the, the pass the parcel type of game if that's maybe and uh, anyone can remember that where the opening it up is as much fun and the same when you're uh, sort of across food and drink the unpackaging of parts where you, you purchase it but it's a, you get pleasure from the taste and the uh, the sort of the the, the opening part the, the, the preempt as it were. Okay. Um, okay, there's another question come up. Um, let me see. How do you think companies and brands can authentically show their commitment to sustainability? Um, I think probably through transparency. Um, just, I suppose, not even um, limited to what's on their packaging, but just transparency with the whole production process and supply chain of their products. Um, it'll give those consumers who are interested in I guess what goes into the product and how they're made, an insight from start to finish. 
um, how companies are acting um, in terms of sustainability and, and behaving ethically. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think there is a uh, a bigger conversation as well in terms of uh, Rebecca had mentioned the the one of the trends we're following climate complexity, um, and there is a certain complexity in terms of education uh, of of terminology, and and, and the, what what people are putting on pack, what brands are putting on packs. So I think to have a a, a more general the almost an alignment so that the, the, the way we do we can see with the traffic light system in some packs at the minute they have sent a very clear sort of a clearer uh, sort of traffic light system that, that consumers can understand as well and, and that that then brands can sort of obviously uh, adhere to as well so i think there is a bit of compl complications with, with brands and, and what they purport to as well okay um another one here great initiative from morrison's are there similar initiatives in northern ireland and can you explain again um how the customer payback works you mentioned three pound um yeah that was just that was more i think that was a trial in their scottish stores um it was through the good to two good to go app um that just kind of offered um unsold products at a discounted price for consumers who were who are shopping on a budget um and then i think they termed the kind of collection bags magic bags that um consumers could shop in store or could collect in store okay. yeah that might be worth just following up on brenda if we can get some examples some local yeah. examples if we can uh, just dig it delve into that um that just talks to our, our our mintel trends in terms of what we're what we're seeing about the the uh, is happening in the stores so we, we can have a look at that and um, if the local market is, is is definitely of interest yeah we try to give as you can see there's a, there's a bit of a uh, international flavor in terms of the example so it's nice to see what's going on in trends in terms of belfast in terms of dublin in terms of cork in terms of uk but also when that lame is mentioned there uh, china japan were mentioned so uh, you know there's there's sort of global global thread there but yes we can definitely look at look at uh pulling out some just more local uh examples yeah, there's just another week question that's coming here about the health claims. So um, who verifies the health claims and products and how can we trust the companies? I think that'd be particularly interesting for the gut immunity because I think there's a bit of a lack of regulations around that. Yeah, um, I think again, that's probably something we can look into and offer more information after. Yeah, Yeah, we uh, one of the products we've mentioned yeah. earlier, uh, the global new products database we basically pick up five we, we have a record of five million uh, products uh, in the database and we pick up about forty thousand products every every month around 86 markets um however they we record we record about 80 data points off each um, take photographs so it's almost like having the product in your hand However, we don't open up the product. Uh, we don't. We don't. Uh, we we don't examine. We don't. If, if there's a particular claim on pack, we we don't go to sort of uh, the the test that part of it or, or gauge what ingredients are in the product. We basically go with what the brand is saying. So, and we can have a look at that. But that probably sits slightly uh, left or right of of sort of what what Mentel do uh, to be fair and more of a legislative uh, piece of thing. So there's various different funding pots that um, SRC can um, help companies avail of. Um, I'll just go through some of them quickly and I'll do the food ones a wee bit more detail because we have food companies here today. So the first one is um, the Skills Focus Program. Um, it's funded by the Department of the Economy and it's a training program for non-mandatory uh, courses and, and training and it's 75% funded. So that would be a big one for us. Then there's two that are quite similar. So it's the Innovation Boost from um, Intertrade Ireland and the Knowledge Transfer Programme from Innovate Us UK. Um, so it's an opportunity for uh, a company to employ um, a highly qualified and high caliber graduate to come into their company and do an innovative uh, project for them. And um, the college would have an academic support mentor who would come in and uh, just monitor them and manage the project for them as well and to provide a bit of support. Uh, the two big ones that uh, myself and Brenda would be involved in most of the time is Innovate Us, which is funded by the Department for the Economy. So it's up to 60 hours of one-to-one -one mentoring where we would either come to your business or you can come into the college and we will uh, train you up on something that's specific to your company needs, um, mostly around research and development and new product development. 
Uh, innovation vouchers is similar, but it's not one to one mentoring. We could do it ourselves or get you involved as much as possible. And again, it's to help you carry out research and development. Um, just specifically to food, what we do, um, and, and these can be applied to any of those programmes that I've just mentioned. Um, myself and Brenda we've come from industry. I don't know, we've probably about 30 plus years of experience between the two of us. And we we're both uh, new product development managers, so we know what it's like uh, working in factories and on the floor. So we can come in and help you with research and innovation. Um, so that's idea generation and um, looking at the trends in food and drink, which uh, what this presentation was just about, uh, looking at competitors and uh, doing some competitor analysis and then come up with, coming up with um, strategies uh, for what to develop. Then we really focus in on new product development. So this covers everything from recipe development, helping you reformulate products if you want to reduce your sugar or your salt or your fats, um, your nutritional analysis. So the traffic light system on the front, are your health claims, are your back of pack um, nutritionals as well. We can show you how to do costings, how to do product optimization, uh, labeling information is especially important at the minute with Natasha's law that's come in. I'm sure a lot of you've been involved in that. Uh, shelf life determination, seeing how long your shelf life is and what you can do to extend it. Uh, consumer testing and packaging. And then uh, once that's all done, uh, you move on to the delivery and launch. So it'll be factory scale up, good manufacturing practices, um, trials, customer presentations, product launches and product reviews. Uh, so if you want help with any of those things or if you're interested in any of the programmes that we mentioned before, please get in touch with um, business support at Southern Regional College or contact myself and Brenda directly. I believe our emails are uh, on this presentation. I'd just like to thank Rebecca and Mark from Intel very much for the time and effort they put into the presentation today. I think uh, Food Trends is always uh, a nice interesting one. And again, for all the team at SRC uh, for getting the presentation up and running and having it running so smoothly this morning. And uh, thanks very much.